What's happening everyone? YouTube, Reddit, anybody else who's uh, watching this video? I hope you are having a fantastic day. I know I am. I'm having a great day. Had a couple guppies give birth today. I had some Neo Caradinas give birth. I'm going to try to show you those in a little bit. I'm going to focus on what's important. So I'm talking to all you beginners, or even if you're not a beginner, let me tell you something that's going to help you. This is a TDS meter. Stands for Total Dissolvable Solids. Now, I'm not going to get into confusing details as to what all this means whenever you read your tap water, because read your tap water first, but I'm going to give you an idea of what it needs to be at in order for your plants and fish and everything to be okay. So, let's say you take this meter. Here's my tap water. I have terrible water. And, um, yes, I've grown plants in terrible water, but they do a lot better depending on your TDS. So here's my TDS, here's my tap water. Let's see what that comes out to. Three hundred nine. Let me tell you something. Three hundred over three hundred tap water is terrible. And it doesn't matter what's causing it. I figured out what's causing mine to be that high starting off. Um, and, and I'll explain it to you. But if you're starting off at 300, it doesn't matter what's comprising it. You've got too much of something going on in there. And you're going to have to uh, cut your water. Uh, a good starting point with water for plants and fish is to have it around 100. And let me tell you why. Anything you add to your tank is going to make your TDS go up. Now the max TDS you can have for anything fish, shrimp, and plants is around four to 500, and that is to the max. You start getting above 400, 500 TDS in your uh, tank water, uh, not only can your plants not photosynthesize anymore, but what's going to happen is, is when that high TDS water passes through your fish's gills, it's going to try to naturally equalize with the pH levels in your fish's body, and it won't happen right away, but over time, your uh, fish will go through os osmotic shock, and, it, and it'll kill them. It'll slowly kill everything, including the plants. So let's say you're testing your water, and all your parameters on here look perfect. You've done your research. You know what your parameters look like, but your TDS is still going through the roof. That means your tap water is providing something too much of something that you don't need. In my case... When I read my water, I had zero for general hardness, zero for chlorine, zero for nitrites, zero for nitrates, zero for everything. But yet my TDS showed me that I had 300. Then I realized it was because my water was coming, was going through a softener. And I'm going to show you. I have a softener. So what I was testing was 300 in sodium. That's too high for anything. If you run in a salt water tank, that's great. But if not then you don't want that. So what I so what I did after that is I wanted to see what my natural water looked like. So I uh, flipped these switches and bypassed my uh, softener and just to see what my mineralized water would look like without all that extra sodium. Well, without all that sodium, I realized why we have a softener, because our mineral levels are through the roof. So then I tested my water, and I was still getting around 350, but that was all in general hardness. So that means our water, our mineral water, before it goes through softener, has way too many minerals also to start off with. So let me tell you what you can do the cheapest way that you can, you can fix this. All right, so let's disregard everything that it means. Because on test strips, or if you buy an API master test strip or anything, the only thing that matters for your fish and plants are these. If you're calculating the math on parts per million and it's way above all of these natural numbers, there's something else going on. So there's two ways you can deal with the water before you use it in your tank. One, you can cut it with purified water from the store. So if you have a 300 TDS and you have a 40 gallon tank, Cut it with 20 gallons of uh, purified water and mix it with your tap water, which will bring your TDS down to 150 and give you a lot of wiggle room. Now, uh, let me explain to you why you need lots of wiggle room, because 300 is already too high. TDS will also pick up all the plants that are in your tank. They will also, it'll also detect 
the substrate. It'll detect any decor or rocks, soil, all the fish. All of those things are, are a factor in it as well. You know, so you need to have some wiggle room for all of these things whenever you add them because they're going to make your TDS go up also. So the lower your TDS to start with, the more stuff you can have in your tank that's not going to jack it up to unsafe levels. Um, so I also found a way where if you're starting your tank and, you're, you, and you want to start with your tap water and your, your TDS is already at, you know, 300 plus, and then you fill your tank water, you fill, you know, you put all your substrate, all your plants, all, everything in there besides the fish, fill it all the way up, and then go buy a bunch of purified water. And gallon by gallon, keep switching out the water until you have reached a TDS below 300. And then that's your stable point. That's what you know your TDS is going to be like with just all the existing things in it. You know, substrate, plants, etc. Uh, you know, so, and then, then you know, okay, whenever I get to 350 TDS, now it's time to do a water change. Now, yes, you may have to go and buy a few gallons of purified water uh, once a month and do water changes with that to keep your TDS you know, down. The only other option is buying an RO system and those can run you $500 plus. Whereas buying purified water and doing your water changes with that will only cost you a few dollars a month. If you do an RO, that will remove everything and you'll have that, your water will be absolutely zero. And so then you have to every month buy all the products that are going to remineralize it. KH buffers, GH buffers, you're going to have to mineralize with, with uh, crushed coral. You're going to have to use lots of driftwood to lower the pH. And all of these things that are constantly going to be irregular. And you're going to be having to test your water every single day. So the easiest thing that I found is that I change 10% with purified water once a week. And that brings my TDS down to 400. And if I can keep it at that level, and yes, everything raises your TDS, even dechlorinators, your plants, any fertilizers. I, I do use some fertilizers, and I've realized mine will, uh, my fertilizer that I do once a week will, rain, will raise the parts per million by 12 once a week. But then the other, you know, 30 plus um, TDS that happens throughout the week is just from like food and unused waste and, and those sorts of things. And that's the type of stuff you should be removing already anyway. So I figured it out for me. I'm going to leave it up to you that you need to figure out what's going on with your water because I can't teach you your house and your water. But what I can tell you is in general, use a TDS meter, order one online. It's going to save you a lot of money. They're only 13 bucks. You can use them a million times. They're reliable. Test your tap water. Have that be your starting point. Now, if you have tap water that's running at a TDS at 100 or lower, you've got great water. You can do water changes with your tap water, you know, as much as you want and not have to worry about endangering anything. But if your tap water is jacked up like it, like mine is, no matter which way, whether I, whether it goes through the softener or it doesn't, my TDS is way too high, and I've already explained why you don't want it, you know, beyond four and 500. Because it can stunt your plants. They won't be able to photosynthesize. So that means they're not going to be able to make oxygen. And then it's going to kill all your fish slowly. And you're going to be like, why? I don't understand. I test my water all the time. I have zero ammonia, zero nitrites. Uh, my nitrates are only 10, which is what plants and fish can live in. My general hardness is at, you know, 150 and my uh, alkalinity is at 80. Everything's perfect. Well, what the heck's going on here? Well, what the heck's going on here is all the extra stuff that's in your tap water. So start there first. Now, keep this in mind. If you buy one of these and you read your tap water and it is your TDS is super low, you have a lot of wiggle room. You can add a lot of stuff to your tank without worrying about it getting too high. But if you don't and you're like me, and you see that your TDS is at 300, you're already in the danger zone. Not only is are your plants and animals in danger, you need to consider drinking different water. Because three, over 300 
TDS, that's even too high for humans. I'm, I'm actually upset. I'm getting in contact with my um, water company today because they need to be doing something more to make the water more safe here where I live. Um, I mean, this is dangerous. And the, the TDS that I'm getting, it's all sodium if I go that route. So I'm not even getting minerals out of my tap water. I'm actually making myself more thirsty if I drink my water because it's loaded with sodium. So I can't even hydrate myself. So what do you think that's going to do to your fish if it's not a saltwater tank? All right, so uh, like I said, what I found the cheapest way to cut back is to buy some purified water from your store, which it usually runs anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar at any grocery store for a gallon of purified water. And then start mixing that with your tap water. That'll be the cheapest way as opposed to spending $50 a month on equalizers for your, uh, for your water. And then you're constantly having to, you know, to check it every single, every single day. Whereas if you cut your water with purified water, you only have to check it once a week. And if you can get your TDS below 300 in your tank, then you know, okay, I only need to add three, I only need to swap out three gallons of this water once a week with purified water and it'll stabilize at that level and nobody's in danger. So like I said, you'll find a bunch of videos of people talking about this stuff and I'm talking to beginners, so I'm not going to get specifically into details about everything this thing reads and what, but it reads literally everything. And I'm telling you what the danger zones are for your animals. Anything above 400 and reaching 500 it's all going to crash on you, everything. And anything you add is going to make it up even higher. I had tested my uh, tank water at one point, and it was at 900. That's ridiculous. And that's just because of the natural stuff in there, because it also picks up all your plants. It also picks up the leaves that fall off your plants that are on, on the ground. It picks up whatever soil substrate. It, it detects that. It detects whatever mineralized rocks you may or may not be using. You know, it detects literally everything. So keep all that in mind. Get a TDS meter. They're 13 bucks. It will really help you jumpstart and do your, do the, do it from the beginning correctly. I hope you found this helpful. If you didn't, again, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm trying to help the beginners. And this is what I found that has helped me. Use this as your baseline for everything when you start off a TDS. Then start testing the water. Find out, make sure it's all comprised of this stuff and that it's not a bunch of mystery things that are in your, that, that are in your water. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.